That stays on. We're back. Hello, we return. And now <laughs> there's even more porn stashes. <laughs> porn stash for Uncle all. Porny, there's uh, Pornlin and uh, Pugna, I guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's an all all porn stash stream. We 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 do this for you. You the viewers. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we should have had like a poll. Uh okay, so we are back. Uh when we when we left off uh, I believe I had the party split between uh, uh, Pornicus <laughs> and uh, Tromlin uh, chatting with uh, Don Emilio uh, about uh, transport and the roads. And uh, meanwhile, Fetid and Ugna are in the uh, the marketplace. Yeah, I was spying uh, on some, some dudes who was Ugna talking trash about me. Ugna is spying on a crowd of people who are whispering about uh, rumors, and Fetid is uh, uh, conversing with a couple of the Quaggles who are trying desperately to get his attention. Uh, so we'll start with Ugna. Um, Ugna, you're listening in. You rolled really well on your, your stealth and perception, so you're listening in on all these conversations. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not seeing. Is the chat moving, or is it just me? I think maybe maybe people are still on break. Maybe. I just thought it was frozen. Oh, there we go. Somebody has responded. Yep. All good. <laughs> um, the chat moves. I was expecting to see at least uh, at least some comment about the porn stashes, but it's all good. I imagine uh, a lot of our and 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 Jeff's balls. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but in any case, um, so Ugna, you're listening in on these uh, market goers, and they're discussing uh, some kind of match. So you heard people talking, whispering your name, uh, and mentioning, um, you know, something about is Ugna afraid or whatever. And it takes you a while. In fact, actually, I wonder if maybe I should get you to roll. Yeah, I'm not very smart. <laughs> yeah, why don't you roll me an int check here? Yeah, and we'll see just straight up well int, right? Yeah, how some, well you're able to one. piece this together. <laughs> I will allow you to add your professional or proficiency bonus because this is okay. related to uh, so pit fighting. 10 so. minus 1, but plus 3 is 12. Yeah. Um, there's something about a match that you're supposed to have hmm. that you're not, hmm. you don't remember. And so you, hmm. your first, uh, your first thought is probably like, oh no, I forgot I was supposed to have a match. Cause I <laughs> that's imagine not that's not my happened. first time. <laughs> Sal yeah. knows to send somebody for me now. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't be... Uh, you wouldn't be surprised to learn that uh, maybe you, you were supposed to have a match that you don't know about. It doesn't sound like it has happened yet. That's good. That this match that you have uh, potentially missed uh, or forgotten about uh, hasn't occurred. Um, but people are talking about uh, uh, a match as though which you assume from what you're hearing is that this match is, is a definite thing. Um, but eventually, I guess I'll say, I guess I'll make your, your role kind of affect how long it takes you to put two and two together. Um, Longer than you'd think. <laughs> yeah. So, like, eventually you get the idea that effectively what's happening is uh, a rumored match. Oh, Okay. That people, basically, there was apparently, while you were gone, rumors of 
uh, a match being set up between you and the Dragonborn champion, Ooh. Uh, Tantalus Fleshrend, um, who you have never met, but have uh, have Little heard big of. Tea. Um, because he doesn't, uh, he's he's like the the current champion of the Dragonborn Isles, you know. So between the four major Dragonborn cities, he's the champion, which is you know not a an easy no uh, position to attain. So he's he's uh, quite known, but there is like talk that uh, there's that he's going to come to the Northlands, huh. and and fight somebody, you know, a champion. In like Karsh or Mud Hollow, and the locals apparently thought it was going to be you. Okay. Um, but uh, you have not been making a very good. Uh, let's say you haven't been extremely um, discreet in the fact that you're preparing for a long journey. Yeah. Oh, oh no! I have. I have. Like porn a cat. <laughs> So you listen to them talking about this and you're so surprised your mustache flies off. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Uh, And so that is why this rumor is now flying around. Oh, interesting. Uh, People are like, oh my goodness, is Ugna scared to go against Fleshrin? Like, Ugna's like leaving town? (laughs) So from the pile of of ropes, there's a, I ain't afraid of nothing. (laughs) And then the ropes just start leaving. (laughs) <laughs> I have uh, uh, can we Nelmar Zesh is on the way to to from uh, yeah, to kind of we can just swing by so you could like slap the gauntlet and then <laughs> shit talk him not, the entire way we're not we're not we're not taking a long trip to flee we're going down there to provoke them intentionally mm-hmm. and then and then we'll see you uh, in Mud Hollow and then Ugna's next inclination if, if people in this market are not talking about her anymore is to go to Sal's arena and be like did I miss a match should I do I need to stick around <laughs> I like find uh, Fetid and be like, I gotta go, man. Let, I got. Let me let I me think cut I, to Fetid. <laughs> let me I cut to up. Fetid and see if Fetid's still there. Um, yeah, so Fetid, um, yeah, you go over to the grate where they're trying to get your attention, mm-hmm. um, and uh, uh, Ma Quaggle or Red uh, says, um, uh, Fetid, Fetid. The, the 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 madam trash heaps looking for you oh boy okay she, um there, there's something's going on uh, all right uh stench is like i i told you he was here yeah uh i'm gonna go find ugna and let her know what's going on before i run well, off when the, you when you turn yeah. to go see where ugna is she's yeah. vanished Oh, There's just a big pile of rope, <laughs> and then you remember uh, that you that you cast uh, pass without trace. Yeah, that's true. Uh, do I have to make a perception roll? <laughs> I mean, you could try. Like, you got to beat a twenty-seven. Let's see what happens. Nope, <laughs> that's a seventeen. All right. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna have uh one of my little animal messenger buddies uh, oh, cool. send a message yeah. to. Uh, I guess Tromlin, saying that I'm going to talk to the uh, trash heap real quick, and sure. I will regroup as soon as soon as I can. Nice. Sounds good. Uh, you could also like leave leave Gregory Stench to uh, let Ugna know whenever she yeah, appears again. Point. Yeah, I'll tell him that. You do that yeah. too. He sees Ugna, let her know what, where I went. Because he doesn't back. seem to be worried about coming with you. Once once okay. once you've been located here, uh, Ma Quaggle leads you off, and he's not, you know, in a rush to stick around. Um, sure. So he 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 says he can do that. Uh, and Ma Quaggle will take you down into the into the depths of Quaggle Rock uh, to the big cavern 
deep under the city, full of garbage that's been sluiced down here from various uh, shafts from the castle above. Uh, and of course, the uh, the great uh, trash elemental uh, dwells here. So you're brought in through the doors, uh, or through one of the tunnels. And uh, uh, as as always uh, occurs here, uh, Philo and Gunge uh, are going to poke their heads up out of the out of the, the filth and go, "Hey, you're in the presence of the." All knowing, all yeah, seeing, yeah. and yeah, and you and Ma Quaggle like just brush past them, and they're like, "Get out of here!" And uh, and uh, yeah, the the trash heap is like sort of half dozing with her big mitten like hands of garbage uh, across her chest, and her little her little pin pince nez sort of low on her nose. Mm -hmm. Banana peel hair is all disheveled. Kind of snoozing. Uh, Ma Quaggle will be uh, your 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 worshipfulness. Um, hello. And uh, the trash heap's kind of snoring. What do you want to do? Uh, I guess go over and poker. Sure. You have there are very many many sticks. Yeah, uh, I'm available. Do some gentle poking. Oh, oh, jab, jab. Um, and she'll start awake and go. Mm, uh, mm, I fetid. Yeah, I was. Fetid? You wanted to see me. And then she looks down, like she didn't realize you were there. Um, mm -hmm. like almost like she said your name because of whatever she was dreaming, before uh, she woke up. Uh, and then she sees you and she goes, Oh, oh well, uh, there you are. Uh, had a vision. Ah, exciting. Yeah, both both of the rat can do, like, file and gun, do this, like, in the background at you. She says, I have had a vision of... The trash dragon, and you will go to the islands. Okay, what islands? The island of the trash dragon. It is there that you will find the salvation of your people. Okay. Ah. Uh... Do we know where this island might be? It is far away. Ah, oh, that's very specific. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, Ma Quaggle will will jump in and say, "What? Uh, this whole salvation of the people thing? Uh, I'm kind of curious about that. Uh, salvation from what? And." Uh, Madam Trash Heap goes, uh, leans back and like peers at you with her little glasses again and says, A great time of trepidation is upon us. Soon the quaggles will need to rise up together. The power is not within them. You are the one that will bring the power to the quaggles. I have spoken. Yes, you have. Thanks, Grandma. Um, I'll get right on that, I guess. Seek the trash dragon. The spirit of the trash dragon shall guide you. Duly noted. I will keep my eye out for any dragons made out of trash. She starts to sink back down into the mound and uh, mm -hmm. Philo and Gunge 
look at you and they both this whine in unison. The great trash heap has right. spoken. I go to kick whichever one of them is closer. <laughs> they, they they like scatter. Mm -hmm. It's like the the uh, the brownies in Willow when they're like, "We are not afraid of you." Mm -hmm. they scatter on uh, records. Well, that's delightful. Now I have a quest. <laughs> As if I didn't have enough on my plate. Got a quest. All right. Well, you got a jade egg in your it. butt, and you got a quest mm -hmm. to do, and it's a bit much. Ugh. Some days being a folk hero just ain't all it's cracked up to be. Mondays. Yep. <laughs> you hate Mondays almost as much as Don Garveldo. <laughs> <laughs> I did mention he's a tabaxi, right? No. No. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, Ma Quaggles like scratches her head and is like, Okay, uh, I hope that helps. I really hope that helps in terms of stopping whatever bad thing is going to happen that they, we don't yeah. know anything about. And I will definitely try to find the island of the trash dragon, whatever the hell and that means. You know, I have people who might know these things. I will ask them when I meet up. And we'll keep our eye out for whatever these trepidations are that are going to be a problem, yeah. apparently. Yeah, that's probably not good. If you can find out anything about trepidations, I mean, if that's some kind of monster or... It sounds like multiple monsters, right? I mean, it's got an S at the end. Right. Mm. So, All right. Whatever you can find out about the, the, the plague of the trepidations and the island of a trash dragon. All right. I will... Start doing some research, I guess. <laughs> so this is a word you learned recently from Copernicus. Yeah. Research. It means books. It means talk to somebody smart. <laughs> They'll do it. Okay. So, uh, meanwhile, Ugna, you went over to Sal's. Yep. Um, and he informs you that no, there's no match. I like show up and I'm like, what are Sal, you talking Sal, about? Did I, did I miss it? Uh, am I too late? <laughs> Nothing's been scheduled for a while. The no. whole problem with the roads, <gasps> nobody's traveling. Okay. They thought I was going to fight some uh, Big T. They thought Big T was on his way here. The Dragonborn? Yeah. I heard some people talking in the market. They seem pretty sure about it, but I mean... You know, people in the market sometimes, they're wrong about things. I, I mean, I guess there's the... I forget how, how voice I was doing for Sal. I vaguely think I was trying to do like a vaguely Jewish thing and it wasn't very good. Anyway, whatever. He was just kind of gruff. He was just kind of a gruff dwarf. He shrugs and tells you to forget about it. I'll use that voice. No. Um, uh, yeah, he's like... No, uh... Nothing that I know about, but maybe maybe all this this talk of the of war in the south might might be what sparked all this. Oh, maybe. Anyway, good. I was worried. I was worried I missed something, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'll I'm, look into it. I I'll gotta see leave what town I... though, so I can't do any matches for a bit. Where? How? How long you gone? Mm, depends on how fast demon horses are. Uh, okay. Um, I gotta go south for a bit, though. So probably a couple weeks. Maybe a month? Well, let me know. I mean, there's definitely been talk of setting up some stuff. The uh, uh, There's a couple of new, uh, new promoters that are getting a lot of attention. Um, I guess you heard about... Uh, you heard about... Uh, uh, Mick Duero. Oh, him. Yeah, and yeah. his... Uh, yeah, I kind of think his whole operation is falling apart now, but there's Good, like, a lot real of... dirty. A lot of people scrambling to pick up the pieces, so I think there's going to be a lot of... a lot of really hyped matches that may or may not be legit for a while. Um, as 
people stra scramble around to to sort of establish a new pecking order. Well, you hear anything about Big T, you let me know, okay? Because uh, I, I always wanted to fight him. He's supposed to be real I, fierce. I mean, the, 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 the dragons are supposed to be warring with uh, the Ibetians. I don't imagine there's going to be a lot of opportunities for people to come or go, but who knows? All right. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't have anything else to tell you. I guess uh, I'll, let, I'll I'll look into it and see what I hear. Sure. Yeah. 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 And I'll uh, send you messages if I can. Uh, if you hear voices in your head, it's probably just uh, Perny. Uh, even if they're screams. Uh. Okay. I hope not. Uh, and with that, um, Tromlin and Perny, uh, a uh, um, some some rat comes uh, scuttling up to you while you're uh, you're chatting with Don Emilio. Uh, actually, probably by this time, uh, having had the initial conversation, uh, you're all sitting down to um, sort of an afternoon tea type of uh, situation, um, and. Uh, having a, a you know, further discussion or sorry no you wanted to go look in your books right i did want to have a look at my books for any um aircraft manuals things related to aircraft artificing um that might be helpful for resurrecting the ship it's but let's say that's where you're at at this point so emilio is off doing you know business and he's left you and your uh your grand nuggets to your devices uh so you're in the library uh looking through your books this may be the first chance Tromlin's had to kind of see, like, your extensive occult library. Uh, you know, certain yeah. books that kind of, like, whisper at you if you get too close to them. You know, maybe there's, there's oh, like, God. a book book with random glowing letters down the spine uh, that just kind of throb quietly to themselves. Um, you know, a book that has a really weird smell uh, whenever you get too close to it. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. You pick up a random book off of a shelf and it uh, tries to, to bite you. It snaps at you. Okay, okay, yep, nope, that's fine. It's all good. Um, and while this is going on, and you sort of like, I will leave you to your devices with your strange, just terrifying demon books, uh, a rat will come scuttling up to you, uh, scuttling up your pant leg, basically. So, Tromlin, you're being climbed by a rat. I'm going to assume this is a friend of a friend, so uh, I cautiously excuse myself from the room because I figure like grabbing a rat and bringing it up to tea might be a little rude. No, this is so you're in the library. You're you're just you oh, and Chris. Yeah. Okay, then I'm like, I, I help the rat up and like, can I help you? And it speaks with Fetid's voice. And mm -hmm. what what was the message? Uh, just that I was going to talk to the trash heap about something urgent, and I would be as soon as possible. Okay. I fish a, like, a little candy or something in my pocket and give it to the rat. Aww. You've got, like, lots of good, like, like pastry crumbs, which are kind of perfect. You go and let in, kind of set it on this way. Scuttles nice. off. Um, so yeah, it doesn't take you very long. Uh, to gather up the what what uh, references you have that you think might be useful, um, and uh, Alina, you're not long chatting with Sal before you come back out, and Fetid will come out of the sewers. Um, Fetid, you'll uh, as you're coming back out from the 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 chamber of the trash heap, um, you'll uh, eventually uh, find uh, Gregory who will. Gregory Stench will let you know that he has located Ugna and connect you all again. Cool. When I when I yeah. say goodbye to Don Emilio, um, I do want to let him know. I'll say, um, <clears throat> well, my <clears throat> my grand nugget Tromlin is a very gifted chef. So if we are trying to make introductions and win over uh, the Dons, you know, it'd be helpful to know if there's a certain dish they like. Don Garveldo, what's what kind of food does he like? <laughs> <laughs> What's his favorite food? Oh man! What? 
Is there like a Spanish variation of lasagna that it would be? Googling um, it. Like some kind of paella? No, it, so Google is trying to correct it to spinach lasagna. Mm. <laughs> and I type Spanish <laughs> lasagna. Good. <laughs> Uh, I, I do not know I do not know what's the uh, what's the dish is called, um, but uh, there is a um, uh, a a a dish of uh, that is very popular in the southern parts of Ibiza, uh, layered uh, layers of uh, um, of a a, a noodle. That has been uh, flat, uh, flattened um, uh, wheat product that has been layered with uh, various uh, vegetables and and meat. Uh, he is very fond of it, but I do not know what it is called. I'm sure you can find out when you are in the area. Uh, pastelon sure is we... a uh, Puerto Rican lasagna. <laughs> What's it called? Pastelon. pastelon. I'll send you the uh, the spelling. <laughs> Sounds good. Yep. All right. Well, yes, then, you must uh, you must cook the noodles in together with the with the the seafood and the vegetables. I'm just in my head. I'm just now like concocting a recipe that's like halfway between a paella and a lasagna. Paisana. <laughs> Paisana. <laughs> yep. Lasagna. Well, when we are assembled. I think I'll pitch to the group. Um, I, I've been thinking about uh, the challenge of getting the cargo down from the mountain. Um, and if I can't fix the airship, which I have no reason to believe I can, um, uh, I was thinking that perhaps... Um... Oh, no. Uh-oh. We have lost Perny mid-explanation. Mid uh, mm. Tell me when I'm back. Oh, you're back. Nope, you're back. You're back. There you go. Mm. Maestro Vittori. My, my cousin Maestro Vittori might be able to help us um, rig something up uh, to get the cargo down from the mountain. Um, but this would involve going to Karsh first. However, if we were going to find a quick boat and a daring captain willing to take us, Karsh would be our best bet anyway. The, the great danger, of course, would be for Tromlin, who seems to have um, drawn drawn a, a target from the, the Karsh Thieves Guild. Disguising is nothing. I can do that. That's a not grapple. Perhaps we could travel as a different set of relatives uh, with similar features um, who uh, no one would question that they are r related in some way. Perhaps a disguise that you could come up with for the both of us. Instead of like halfling hair foots, we're like halfling hair faces. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The hair face halflings. <laughs> we, we all talk like Matthew McConaughey and dazed and confused. Hell yes. It's all good. All right, all right, all right. And and actually, um, Tromlin, you have like a standing, uh, like your your alternate ego, or your your alternate identity, specifically is um, uh, for traveling to Karsh and dealing with uh, with stuff down there, with the guild. So yeah. you could just pull out your your specific alternate identity, which has the advantage of um, allowing you to have a disguise while still having your ability to connect with your contacts and uh, and other things down there. Also, I'll point out, Ugna has never met. Yes, Ugna does not know your alter ego. <laughs> I know that there is a satyr in Karsh, and he's he's real cool. A very different satyr. Completely. I keep fucking with uh, this anyway. now. It's just like... <laughs> Someone in gotta, the chat said that you look like how... uh, very Disco Elysium, and I can't unsee it now. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is this is all getting shaved off after we're done. Like all yep. of it going away. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah. So if we want to, we could boogie over to Karsh and see see what's up. Been a minute since I was there. Wouldn't say oh, no. And as long as we can keep Tromlin safe. And Vittori is a, a master at making. Um, replacement limbs and appendages so if trey wants hey! to have something to help him perfect his walk or move a little faster this would be a chance to do a, a, a in-person fitting yeah i was trying to help him walk earlier and it's just it's just real tough for him 
be good to see him on his on all four feet. So what is the plan? Are you basically gonna? I think we can demon horse the yep. car shirt. Or does is Karsh better reached by land or, or sea? Uh, I mean, either from from Mud Hollow would be fine because like uh, by sea from Mud Hollow to Karsh, um, that that doesn't take you through any of these these uh, uh, war zones. Mm. So it's like just constant normal traffic. Um, that said, because you've got the crazy uh, um, phantom seed option, uh, you could probably do it in, in, in about the same amount of time. Uh, overland, it would it would be um, like a couple days journey on foot uh, without that. Like one one day at like extreme forced march situation, or like two days of normal travel would get you there. Um, That's faster than anyone the, else is going to be going. Like, what's the speed on those horses? I think it's 100 feet per round. So comparing that to, like, a normal rate of travel, that's, like... And they don't tire. We just have to stop and recast them every hour? They, can't, they go 10 miles an hour. Yeah, and I, can't, I, have to I have to take 10 minutes every hour to recast it. I would say it, it might be a little bit faster to go by ship if, if, you, the fast pace. if you're willing to, like... Um, spend the money to like charter something like in other words if you're not just go you're waiting if you're waiting around for a ship that's going there anyway that amount of extra time would be similar to taking the 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 demon horses um, <laughs> we could if you were willing spend to spend the money, money for a fast boat that we may or may not have or we can cause rumors about demons flying across the main road between mud hollow and car demon, demon horse can i use my friends in uh, low places to see if there's anyone that we could chart affordably that i trust uh yes you certainly could um and like in particularly in your hometown um you would not find it too difficult uh you uh know that you could quickly go and talk to i mean either quorum um uh, actually alina do you want to pull up the uh, more detailed map of the area because that's sure. where you guys are pretty easy um you could, uh, I think I was saying, you could easily go and talk to Quorm, uh, or since he's kind of not as involved in um, uh, in uh, smuggling anymore, now that he's kind of moving up the ladder. Uh, there's also um, your elven smuggler friend, uh, Karen Bowweaver. Kyron, I should say, Kyron Bowweaver. Uh, Kyron's uh, one of the elves of the local swamp that does a lot of smuggling, and so she's connected with all the the local smugglers, um, and that would be yeah. probably probably the quickest uh, way to get down to Karsh is to find someone who's heading that way to do some smuggling anyway. All right, I'll go to him. Um, I will. Her. her, sorry, I'll go to her and say basically. Like, Situation: Some friends of mine are trying to get to Karsh immediately. Um, um, yeah, she will. She will tell you uh, who to talk to. She'll first of all, she'll say that you should go um, to the uh, what was it called? The tavern. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, da, 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 the groggy squid, of course. Oh, good. Um, which is the the sort of uh, thieves oh, guild favorite tavern in the waterfront, in the merchant's yeah. key. Uh, and she will give you a couple of names of people to look for, or people to ask about uh, to put you in touch, and to say that uh, Chiron sent you. Alright. Uh, what is she going to give you here? So one of them is a halfling. Uh -huh. uh, yes, one is a halfling named Robert. Robert uh, Oatbute. Oatbute? Oatbute. Okay, but 
Uh, and no, it's uh, O T B U T T. Z. I, I, was, I was joking. What boots? Um, oh, boots. Oh, boots. And uh, that particular uh, halfling smuggler uh, frequently makes the trip up and down the coast. Uh, and so it would be a good choice uh, and owes her a favor. Uh, and uh, the other smuggler uh, is a, a human woman uh, named uh, uh, Guiana the Spider. Guiana the Spider? Yeah, Guiana the Spider. Her name is just Guiana. But people call her the Spider. Uh, because oh, it's like a really connected web. Uh, she's, uh, no, actually, you do kind of like that. It has, it kind of gives you a little bit of a, oh, yes, I should go with that one kind of moment as you remember who you're worshiping today. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. It's a sign from Char. Char's not so much the spider one, but that's Lolf. Yep. But, Drow are all kind of like, but still, Drow, cool, Drow. Drow like the spiders. Okay. So either of those two would be your best bets. Um, Guiana might not be going down there, but she would 100% have people who are going down there. Um, okay. And then um, Robert, that's just his his constant. I will, I will go seek out Guiana first, because spiders. Why not? I think in the in the honor of halfling names, I think I'm I, I'm going to retcon that, and his name is actually Oat Buttes, like the the rock formation and the grain. Right. Oat Buttes, because that's that's the halfling way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Yep. Rob for short, of course. Uh. I think I see where that one's going. Okay. I don't know. I don't have no idea what you mean. Okay, so you've got some leads on some um, uh, uh, quick uh, ways to get to Karsh. What yeah. do you prefer? So the map is up now, so you can see uh, the road goes a little ways out of your way. Um, but uh, I guess theoretically with the, um, the Phantom Steeds, because do the Phantom Steeds need roads? I don't remember. I thought the Phantom Steeds got to ignore terrain. Maybe I'm wrong. They do if we've got a ranger with us. Well, that is true. It doesn't say anything about ignoring terrain. I think I just yeah. made them fly whenever we hit oh, the yeah. patches before. Um, They're probably so... not going to want to go to the extent of like cutting directly across. Yeah, probably not. Uh, although I guess that that's probably within the ranger thing. The only issue is you're going to get to uh, you're going to get to the bluff there. That's uh, like a major escarpment. That Tanner's bluff. Um, oh, that'll be a good time to test the flying thing, though. I feel true. like that's. I, mean, I feel like we can handle that. Test on a but bluff rather can... than a mountain. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So you had a couple options. You could uh, you could set out with your with your demon horse test deal, or you could grab one of these. Uh, one of these smuggler's ships and head to Karsh. If Tromlin finds a good smuggler's ship that he's he's confident in, then I, I trust his procurement process, and I say, let's do that. Um, but if there's anything shady or there's a bit of a wait, then I say we, we demon horse it up. And yeah. We One way or another, we're leaving town tonight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will go first to the spider. Gianna the spider. Hey, so you head to the groggy squid? Yeah. Are, are, you, are you all going? Sure. No. Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Yes. No. No. Uh -huh. no. Yes. <laughs> no. This is something I, I feel. Problem does not trust uh, his uh, his party around his contacts. Fair. Uh, yeah. Can't imagine not... that. We'll stay home and pack. I'm, I gotta get uh, tray packed up, ready to go. Please do. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so Tromlin, you head out to the groggy squid, uh, and uh, it's the usual. Uh, mixture. It's a usual volatile mixture of 
uh, you know, local thieves guild, tough type, shady uh, individuals, and the transient uh, sailor population uh, drinking at the at the you know pub that is near the docks. Um, obviously, quite the volatile mix, but uh, also very good for business. Uh, there's only already, there's already been a couple of fist fights tonight by the time you get there. Um, good, 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 but, good. uh, things are kind of jumping pretty good. Uh, it's like not quite, uh, late midday. I would like, I would, it's, it's past midday by now, but like early to mid afternoon, like it's still a couple hours from dinner time. Um, so it's not like super hopping like it would be later on. Most of the, a lot of people are working still. Uh, but there's a pretty yeah. decent mix of, uh, of oh. folks in here. Okay, I will again. I immediately search out Gianna. That's the first person. Okay, let's see if Gianna the Spider is around. Uh, a few of your contacts are here, uh, and you ask around if anyone uh, has seen Gianna the Spider, and. Um, they will tell you that she uh, has been uh, around the place today, but uh, is not currently there. Um, some of her people are here, though. Um, I will go up to one of people, and I will do the officially appropriate level bribe to get her in contact with me as fast as possible. Sure. Yeah, you've got enough coin to... to like, that's not going to be a big chunk of change to just have a, right, a I, quick meeting all right and while that's going on while i'm waiting i guess i'll look for the halfling robert uh yes um as you're sort of asking around um people say that they have just seen him recently he's not really around at the moment but then as you're talking he uh comes into the the bar with uh, a couple of his sailor friends got a little bit of a swagger to him even though he's like three and a half feet tall I'm not gonna insult the man. He, he's he's got a business going. He's got um, he's got a big he's got a big handlebar mustache too. Although his is all waxed up, he's got the big right. waxed. Yep. And a um, little. I approve. A little uh, uh, sea oiled uh, bowler hat, canvas bowler hat, at a at a rakish I angle. I approach him and let me know that Karen told me as a Karen Bowiever. Yep. Uh told me to get in contact with him and see uh, if he was heading to Karsh anytime soon. Uh, he, let's let me give you some random luck rolls here. Uh, he is in fact, well actually he's going to come off a little cagey to start with. Um, he's he's kind of, well, who wants to know? Um, so I might get you to give me a roll. Um, well, you're going to begin verbal fencing here to get the information you want uh i think um, for i think this is just going to be a straight up uh persuasion versus persuasion okay well that's my plus 10 so yep you are very good at this oof that bad huh oh shit um 17 uh total yeah total Okay. I can He's use. Do you, so, you want to inspire it? Yeah, I'll inspire re roll. Okay. Mark you off here. Um, that, that's a 25. Uh, that'll do it. Just. Uh, what have I got here? Total 23. Yeah, so you got it. Uh, yeah, so you, uh, he's very cagey and you quickly, you quickly discern with a couple of well-pointed questions that he is probably making a trip, like, like he is going to Karsh tonight. And the okay. reason he doesn't want anyone to know that is because it's not a, you know, a legitimate cargo. Neither are we. Why, yeah. why do I feel like we're going to end up on the same boat as that guy we saw <laughs> talking to John Emilio? Good. Um, I basically explain some friends of mine need to Karsh. If nothing else, you know, they get paid away. Or if you need a strong back, one of them is pretty large. 
So you quickly sort of switch to Thieves' Cant yeah. and and start to kind of like make it clear that you are that that you your people are also up to no good. Um, yes. I also love that your pitch for like making us useful is like one of us is strong. <laughs> yeah. It's a ship. It, we bring a lot. We bring a lot to the table. One of us is useful. And anyway. the rest of us smell. It's very good. And the rest of us will stay All out of, of your smell. way. smell. <laughs> very bad. Wait, what you basically say is the group of four of us can easily do the work of four people. Correct. <laughs> By which you mean Ugna can do the work of four people. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So you. Uh, with that uh, persuasion role, you basically, you know, f verbally fence him around to getting to sort of admitting that he is indeed um, uh, taking his his boat down to Karsh tonight, um, and that he does in fact uh, uh, he he could in fact make use of your group. Um, he's going to negotiate a price. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't particularly, you know, he has crew. He doesn't particularly need more crew. You can sweeten the deal a bit by being like, well, one of the people who's coming with me is extremely strong and can be very, very useful to you. Um, and you probably use that to lift a horse. Course. Basically, yeah. yeah. Make me a persuasion versus his insight now for the negotiation process. We'll figure out how much is. Okay, um, where is my... Persuasion? Yep. 24. Ooh. I have rolled a nat 20. Ooh. And um, I don't persuade. Yeah. So he he manages to... Uh, he k sort of keys into the fact that you are, like, in a, in a hurry and you wanted to get this done tonight and you've got, you know, limited options and he basically holds you to a higher price. Um. You, you are able to negotiate with him for passage, uh, but you're going to pay for it. Um, we will pay upon arrival. Uh, he's holding out for a, a down payment and the, and the balance on arrival. He's mm, gonna, is there any... He's, he's, uh, his position is he's going to have to, like, in order to have space on the boat, He's going to have to, like, leave some of his crew here and tell them you don't need to come. And if you turn around and, you know, don't show up on him or prove to be not useful to his crew, he's screwing himself. So he wants a down payment. And I guess, I'm assuming I haven't had the fortune of the spider walking in at this moment. I uh, will make a roll for it. No. God damn it. Um... Can I try mm -hmm. to haggle him to a quarter? Uh, for the down payment? Yeah. Um, trying to decide how much rides on that nat 20 he rolled. I'll tell you what, if you spend an inspiration, I will say yes. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. Alright, last inspiration. Well, it doesn't have to be yours either. This is for yeah. the group. So if someone oh, else, I mean, I'll spend one it. happily. Okay. How am I? Oh, I'm not Yeah. So Ugna, you want to spend yeah. one? It's been a while since I spent one. Okay. So this is going to give you a separate roll for just um, how much, uh, how how big of the percentage this is. So you go ahead and roll against again against his insight. I think you have a better shot this time. Okay. So roll your persuasion. Um, 23. That is going to beat him. Um, so yeah, you basically uh, impress upon him. You kind of drop some names. You're like, I'm doing some guild business for Benny here. Uh, I can pay, but uh, I sh I'm only going to pay you a quarter up front. Uh, and you, you manage to talk him into it. Um, so he will take a quarter up front and the rest when you get to Karsh. Okay, um, the fee that he is asking for is going to leave you pretty strapped. Yeah. Um, but you certainly know that you can get some money from your uh, grandfunkel. 
um, for the payment on site. So you're, you're giving them the down payment now, you can definitely afford it. Cool. Doesn't leave you a ton of cash because you haven't been able to work at your uh, stall for the last little while, but yeah. But you know your grandpa is good for low. it. Well. You're also not terribly unhappy that you're paying him well because if you it increases your confidence that you're not going to get any kind of screw job also dropping benny's name probably wasn't a bad idea oh right. you're good yep meanwhile uh fed in ugna copernicus you pack up at the house and gather up whatever uh stuff you feel you need for your trip Dad, were you successful in acquiring a pair of goggles? As a matter of fact, I was able to craft a pair of goggles. Oh, lovely. I look forward They're really to good. seeing how that looks. <laughs> I present them to you with great ceremony and pride. I, Perny looks up very genuinely impressed. <laughs> that yeah, is quite something. They're like really cool steampunk goggles. The only thing is that they have a weird smell. What that you might not even notice. You don't breathe. Used to be. Yeah. Yeah. What were these well, before they were goggles? Uh, that's a good question. I'm afraid I will never know the full answer. Um, but uh, I was helped out by my friendly local Best Buy. Oh, good. Support local. <laughs> yes. But Best Buy. Shop Best Buy. Support local. Um, Ernie, Ernie's going to slip them onto the bucket. Um, and say, nice. Time for an adventure. The bucket is now ready for Comic Con. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Do it. Steampunk bucket. Yay. Now that is a good image. The, the bucket is dressed all Paul steampunk. With like a badge, lanyard on it. Yeah. Yep. Good. Solid. Oh, it just made me realize I haven't seen the Lara in the chat, although I haven't been oh. paying a lot of attention. I wonder if Lara is with us tonight. It's always here uh, in our hearts. Someone... Lara is always in our hearts. Anytime <laughs> somebody mentions something that makes an amusing image, I immediately yeah. think of Lara. Um, He's very much the the patron saint of amusing images that then all of a sudden are rendered in extraordinary detail and color. <laughs> yep. So, um, uh, in, in the manner of a grandparent who um, is like, gives you ten dollars every time he sees you, I'm gonna fed. He's Bernie's just gonna give you some money for the the goggles because he doesn't know what they cost, and also it looks like you made it from garbage, but really well. And you know, pay craftspeople for their for their time and uh, expertise. So as we all stare directly into the camera, pay your artist. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll fumble a bunch of coins into your claws. Aww. All right, cool. Neither of us knows how much this is. <laughs> no, it's you know, it's the gesture more than the amount. Yep. There's a, probably a few hard candies mixed in with the. Uh, mm -hmm. pieces. I mean, I'll. I'm gonna eat it all anyway. <laughs> it's a shiny rock. There's some yeah, money. Good. There's some, some gold. Yeah. A weird bone. Oh. Yeah. Live mouse. Good. Okay. Uh, so Tromlin, you're gonna let your your pals know what the what the sitch is. Yeah. Um, we have a ship for tonight. We have to go. I put a down payment on it. We will have to help work as well. Pay for pay. Uh, passage um which means like i've done some of this i know how to do it um ugna you'll probably be doing a lot of lifting i can lift i don't know what the other two will be doing but like listen to orders is all i ask because we're on a ship and that means that if you it's probably not a very big ship it means there's not a brig to be thrown into which means it's just being thrown overboard I've heard that every rule on a ship is a memorial to a dead sailor. And I've also heard that the more dead sailors you have, the bigger the raft of bodies gets. Um, so really, you want as many dead sailors as you can get so you can have the, the biggest fleet. Is that Do I understand that correctly? And uh, let's Should not I clarify do any... this with the captain? No. We will have no dead sailor talk on the ship. We will not be discussing necromancy. 
Um, I do not. Is. We do not know what they're bringing. I have a feeling it's illicit. But if it is illicit and edible, we will not be eating it. I look straight at Fetid on that one. <laughs> what a great time for me to announce another poll. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, mother. It's cheese. The whole ship is cheese. transporting delicious cheese. Uh, so I would ask my shadow DM to queue up our poll number two. And uh, there it is. So uh, as always, I will remind the audience uh, to please vote. And don't forget that you have uh, uh, multiple votes if you wish to put any channel points or other uh, uh, bits and so forth in your voting. Uh, this particular vote is going to affect several things that will have some continuous fallout through this adventure as oh, those who good. can see the po as those who can see the poll uh, will be clearly aware of um, so I will uh, I will leave that uh, for the poll uh, to occur just keep in mind 10 minutes probably nine and a half now uh, is as far as the poll will run all right. So I am very excited to see uh, which is the favorite for this particular poll. Uh, yeah, uh, so you no problems getting the rest of your preparations put together. Um, Tromlin, you at some point maybe go and uh, let um, uh, Madame de Narnia know that she doesn't have to worry about her little problem. Um, she will immediately let you know that she has does not want to know any details whatsoever. Um, and has definitely noticed that they haven't been in at all and hopes at the very least that they survived <laughs> and, and more to the point that nothing was going to be traced back to the casino uh, which I'm sure you uh, assure her is should be is fine should be fine and I, I'm not going to say anything what happened just they shouldn't be back for a while uh, and if and... one of them comes back he won't be saying a lot <laughs> yeah, and uh, Copernicus, you you know, say you're, uh, you're you you get that message from uh, Don Emilio for his father uh, to deliver uh, and so forth. Um, and one for Don, the Don, so I assume message yep. for that. Yep, the the message for um, he'll. So if you're definitely going to Santo Bianco, he'll give you the message for Don Garvaldo because that's the one who lives there. Hmm, okay. um, He'll give you messages for uh, Don Esteban and Dona Isabella as well. Um, but uh, particularly, he'll give you the one for Don Garveldo. Um, uh, and then, you know, Fetid, you let the Quaggles know you'll be out of town for a while. Ugna, you, uh, right are, you are taking... Right. Yeah, no worries. Oh, yeah, Trace, You are on. taking... Yeah, okay, I was going to say yeah. you're taking Trace. You don't have to make any arrangements no, there, but, but you I let like, Sal know you're going. Yeah, I like get the house ready for us to be gone for a while. <laughs> yep. Lock up, put everything away, make sure there's no milk in the fridge. And so, yeah, you guys uh, head out to the quay. Um, Tromlin's been given the particular uh, dock, uh, and it is, in fact, the um, what is sometimes known in the Thieves Guild as the Smuggler's Dock which is the one uh, alongside the breakwater at the far north end of the quay. Um, it's the easiest one for a ship to slip in and out unseen around the breakwater. Um, and, uh, you know, unless, of course, one just wants to bribe the guards, but which also happens. Uh, and you are led to a relatively small ship. Um, it is a little schooner. Uh, it is not even, in fact, uh, ship rigged. It's a single masted, uh, single masted schooner uh, with a big uh, lateen sail and a raked mast. So it's actually um, uh, those of you who have any. So I would say Copernicus, with his well traveled, um, and to a certain extent Tromlin, who has been chumming around with smugglers, will both recognize this as a very fast ship. Um, I do believe it is... it'll get us there schooner or later. <laughs> Good. Good. More likely schooner than later, um, as is what I'm getting at. Um, it is a um, 
uh, a typical uh, darker colored ship. Uh, it's not uncommon to uh, pitch the outside of the ship and paint the remaining exposed wood black because it matches the pitch. Um, although it is more common for merchant ships to like try and make themselves look all bright colored and, and flashy. So it, it looks a little suspicious to begin with as a dark colored ship. Good. Uh, it's either going to be a fisherman. Of, of <laughs> well, it's either a fisherman who is going for the cheapest way to to uh, um, maintain their In ship, schooner. or it's a smuggler. All yeah. oh, right, I could fish off this ship. And Tromlin oh, didn't could. say you anything about could. not doing that. No. And in fact, as a um, a schooner is far more likely to be on the scale of a fishing boat. And in fact, this thing probably started life as a fishing vessel. Um, there are, even though it is the middle of the night a number of people uh, bustling around this particular boat. Um, and as you approach the, uh, you know, Tromlin, of course, is completely uh, in his element uh, here, but others might sort of notice the conspicuous lack of town guard at the north end of the quay, um, that there's, there's clearly been... This is the usual thing. Tromlin would know that the, the on-the-ground... Yeah, the on the ground guard, like the individual guards, have just been paid to like not be paying attention to this end of the key. Um, and everybody's kind of like uh, cloaked up and otherwise keeping themselves a little inconspicuous. <laughs> we are the opposite. Now, Tromlin, are you coming over here in your disguise already, or are you going to wait till you get yeah, there? Yeah, we to... have to. Um. I'm going to have to let Ugna know. There's no way to hold this for her anymore at this point. <laughs> I was like, Ugna, I need to sit you down, and I need to explain something to you. I hope you forget about it soon. Oh, oh, is it, uh, this is a serious talk. Okay, okay. And I'll, I'll like, I've got Trey on my chest in a baby bjord and, like, all our packs on my back. And I'll, like, mm -hmm. squat down next to you with a serious face. Um, so you're about the... to tell her Santa's not real. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the... You squat down and put like your hand on your thigh, like that that sports pep talk pose. Yep. You know that satyr you know, you know in Karsh, the clown? Oh yeah, he's cool. I activate the tattoo and <laughs> disguise it. I, I fall over. That's a really good imitation of him. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're, and then I get up and I'm like, oh, you're, you're doing that thing that you do where you look like somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to spend the trip looking like him. He said it's totally okay. I <laughs> okay. just want you to know. Good. Good. All right. Good. Thank you for telling me. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> that, that, like, immediate pivot that was like, oh, okay, this is going to work out easier than I thought. <laughs> And then I remove the face makeup, so I, I still look like a different satyr, but still. So you, you're um, like a, a darker the... satyr, right? But with like a, a clown makeup on your face? Basically. Cool. Like I, Did you like name almost... him? I, I gotta look it up. It's, it's on my <laughs> I don't sheet. have anything on my on your the character sheet. Um, it it's just says that you have the false identity. Yeah, if you can, I'd I'll love look... for you to let us know what the false alternate ID is. I'll, oh no, I'll here it is. I found it. No, I found it. Okay. It is on the character sheet. Uh, uh, Townic Right Fist. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. I thought you were going to be like Pagliacci or something. No, that seemed too easy. <laughs> Obvious. But Doctor, I am Tromlin, Darius. <laughs> there we go. He's Put a clown. it in the chat. You could be a uh, comedian. Okay. Could be harsh. We oh, only good. got a couple minutes left on the good. poll, everybody. I'm not seeing a ton of votes, so bring them in. This is your last chance. You're down to about the last minute on this poll. So bring it on home. We've got a close fight between two of them here. I want to yeah, see break, who's going to win. Bring that tie, win. because Lane has sometimes done both things to us. <laughs> Well, in this particular case, it's kind of mutually exclusive. It doesn't gotcha. really make a lot of sense for it to be more than one of these. So if it does come down to a tie, I will have to roll off. Oh my goodness. It is so close. 
Some people really want certain ones to win here. Okay, while that is counting down the last few seconds, I will... Um, yeah, so you you uh, are therefore you're so you're heading up to the to the key up out onto the key, uh, in this outfit. Or are you going to drop it until you're on the boat? Um, I'm going to change. Like, I'm not going to be in full clown garb. I'm I'm in other clothing. But I'm in just, that purse. But in that guise. That face. I don't want anyone yeah. to. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Wow, that was a. Uh, a scramble at the finish. Excellent. Thank you very much, chat, for giving me some significant details about the next uh, uh, several sessions. <laughs> uh, I will reveal only that this is going to help me know what exactly is going on with the cargo that you are going to be recovering. Um, so, you... Uh, yeah, you head up here and immediately say to some, like, there's some, someone immediately kind of comes over and is like, you got some business here? Move along. Nothing to see here. I look at him and I was like, Robert's expecting us and assuming he wants the rest of the payment for us to be on the ship. You kind of look, like, squint at you suspiciously and take a few steps away and whisper to somebody who jumps up onto the boat. A few moments later, um, Robert himself pokes his head over the side uh, and says, come on, get aboard real quick. Walk, walk by, like, coin purse in his it. hand. He gives you the nod. Hand immediately goes into the lapel. He's he's pretty, uh, uh, in, he, he bustles you below deck very quickly. Um, particularly Ugna's very uh, eye-catching. Yeah. Um, we didn't bring you a cloak, but maybe we can just get an entire sail. <laughs> I probably have my traveling cloak, but like I'm still like, eight feet tall and have pink hair, so. And, so and have an so owl bear under. strap too. Yes, you. correct. And like five packs. Wait, can we call can we call Trey's Bjorn the Bjorn to be wild? Oh, good. The, the yes. Bjorn yes. of the wild. I wouldn't call it anything else. Now that's like a magic item that you need to find at some point that has some kind of yeah. bonuses yeah, yeah. while he's in there. The Bjorn the Bjorn to be wild. Uh, okay, so uh, it takes very little time after you get there for them to finish uh, stowing uh, and battening down cargo. It's not a heavily laden ship. Um, as Tromlin is well aware, the, uh, the main goal here with smuggling with these fast ships is small quantities of expensive goods that you're trying to get around to uh, around the taxes not like you know a cargo of wheat or something uh that would be something uh that if you were trying to smuggle it you'd move it in a very different way um and uh yeah very quickly they get under sail uh silently slipping uh their moorings no sails in sight uh, the uh, the various uh, sailors take up positions along the uh, the rails on either side uh, and put out oars uh, through the spacings on the on the the gunnels and very awkwardly since this is actually like you know a, a small schooner uh, and not like a rowing boat uh, with these very long oars they awkwardly paddle it out um, but silently. Uh, well, once we're the key. far enough away that I'm allowed to come above decks, uh, and I, I just have, I don't have any of the packs on me anymore, I will look at one of them and be like, oh, here, l let me help out. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I have the wingspan to grab one of each oars and use this like a sailing, like side. a rowing vessel. It's like an Asterix and Obelix cartoon yes. where you just, like, and the whole thing moves like. Oh, and you're like out of the water. Like, yeah. Just jumping yeah. on the, the oars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, honestly, they're, uh, so it, it'll very quickly get, like, very uh, <laughs> I go, uh, I go it's been a while since I did the rowing machine. Here, let, me out of, let, let me in here. <laughs> so this, this doesn't happen for a bit, because yeah. it's actually, when you first get on the boat, it's very tense. Everyone is completely deathly silent. Um, and so you're all kind of, like, 
encouraged to get below decks and just stay there. There's no lights of any kind on deck. No one has like a candle or a lantern or anything. Um, And they're rowing their way out basically entirely by the phosphorescence of the, of the, the seawater. Um, Until you get out past the quay and out of the little Harbor. So um, of course, Mud Hollow has the, Mud Hollow is built on Murky Harbor, which is this like just brown watered harbor where the where the filthy uh, uh, brown water river dumps into the sea. Um, yeah, if you can like move that all the way to the side, mm-hmm. yeah, you can't really go all the way over. I can scroll it up though. Do like one of these. Right, right. Yeah. I forgot you could do that. Murky Harbor. So yeah, and so the Murky Harbor. Uh, extends out a ways, but then there's a bunch of rocks on one side that you have to go around. They skirt the rocks. Instead of, like, steering well clear of them on the north side of the harbor, they go through the south side of the harbor, um, trusting to their shallow, shallow draft, and, the and of course, their well-known, their, their familiarity uh, with the area, um, and paddle their way past it. Um, once they get out of the harbor... And they start saying, you know, okay, you can come on decks. Um, you come out and you see the the oars and you kind of like, hey, let me get in here and start paddling. Um, you know, they're very quickly they're like, no, no, we, we need to put up sails. Ah. <laughs> I go for a bit, just so I get a little like, bit of a good burn going. Get a little, get a little workout. Yeah, exactly. Um, and eventually they will, uh, they'll, they'll run up their, uh, their, they're knife thin lateen sails on either side of the of the mast uh, and the boat picks up speed very quickly and you're uh, on how, your way how how tight of quarters are things down below decks if i was going to um take a, the downtime to like if i'm not being ordered about if i could take the downtime to like say ask a demon some questions um <laughs> i was gonna do a little bit of uh, research, um, and Fedid, if you're willing to share the details of your very vague quest, I could ask for um, some probably yeah. unhelpful uh, clarification. But Yeah, the, the Isle of the Trash Dragon. Uh, yeah. Coming trepidations, which may have actually meant tribulations, but I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking about freeing my people. But in case I end up shrieking... Uh, madly instead of getting answers i just like is this the kind of um ship where it's gonna be real obvious if uh i'm up to something or is there like a little corner i can tuck away in there's there's not a lot in the way of corners but also the entire um crew are on deck um so yeah you can kind of be out of the way you can sort of go and hide yourself like behind this stuff. This is a small enough boat that there is basically one cabin and then just like the below decks uh, and then the bilge. And that's basically it. And there might be like a little uh, like there's no there's no um, officer class or marines or anything like that. It's not like a naval boat. So how, like how the below the decks is... How bad is the bilge if, if uh, Fedid and I wanted to crawl in there and Fedid, you can be there to, like, if something happens to me, you pull me out. And also, like, if you need to shove something in my mouth so I'm not, like, screaming and gibbering, that's you, your job. Yeah. The bilge is, like, Fedid could fit, you couldn't. Okay. Right? Like, the bilge is just literally that bottom angle of the boat where it, mm-hmm. where it comes to a point below where you can have a deck that's just full of water. Okay. Now, Fedid, of course, is, like, yeah, I've pl- some of the places where I've lived are like that. Um, but maybe not so much for anybody else in the party. Glorpa would be at home down there, but that's because Glorpa could just become Bilgewater. Yeah. I make some friends in some of the mold. Mm-hmm. Make some, I'll, some I'll, friends. I'll take the most tucked away corner I can get. And I'd like to borrow someone's map in case I end up having to do, like, spirit drawing to, like, scribble Ooh. out a route or, like, mark a spot. But I think I'm gonna go commune with some some demons. Some very bad things. Okay, what uh, what exactly do you want to uh, to ask of the other realities? So I think the first question I'll list them out, and you can tell me how far we get. Uh, and we can do this one by one in character. Like I don't know how you want to how you want to do this, but um, basically I want to know where where the cargo is, um, what the cargo is, 
um, where the trash dragon is. Um, or like maybe. So are you are you mainly interested in like where is the trash dragon, or or would you want to start with like what is the trash dragon? I was gonna ask you where. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, it's a trash I also dragon. figure that we could we we can figure out what it is when we get there by mm. waking it. Yeah. But um, yeah. I, I guess I could ask what it is. I, where is my first question? I guess what it is is the second question for the trash dragon. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. I doubt I'm going to get that far. So let's start with that. And if we end up with any more questions. Before you, you, completely get, you get five questions. Okay. But keep in mind that the questions are all one word answer questions. Right. So it could okay. be like where, uh, where one word is the or a go? short phrase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you could give me something like where is the cargo and get like a, a name of a specific town it's near or hill or something. I, like, like, so is there a way that I can um, pay some inspiration or uh, I'm not going to offer a black token on this, but if you if you pitch it to me, I, I'll consider it. I want to <laughs> like spirit draw on the map, like get possessed and stab some pins and some spots on the map to figure out where specific things are. I would let you... Um, I guess it depends on the extent. Like, I wouldn't offer... I wouldn't do a black token deal just for that. Um, but for... Uh, but I, I would... If, if all you're going to do is instead of getting a, a, a word answer, you want um, to mark the map. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like... so. If you um, if you are willing to give up like your five questions on one casting, I don't think I would even make you pay an inspiration because you could basically put the map down and say, uh, I, I, um, "What direction from here am I looking for?" Right, and put your finger on the map and have the the voice say, "You know, f further east." And then, or east, and then you move your hand and say, "How about here?" And you basically hot or cold your way through five questions is a pretty nice. going to get you pretty close. Yeah. To get like, to I don't, cargo. I don't think you yeah. you don't even need to really break the the rules of this spell to do that. Okay. Um, if if you want something more like, no, I want one question to be like stick. I stick a pin in the map exactly where I'm looking. That I would have to make a bargain of some sort for. Because I'm hoping to get map locations for Trash Dragon and um, Cargo. And then um, I kind of want to ask a, about Beredvar and Yinvar um, uh, and see if they'll give me a location on that. But that seems like I'm playing with some, some dirty dice there. <laughs> I mean, like all of, I think all of this is, is workable. It depends on how many saving throws you're happy to make. Because this is a ritual spell. You can keep trying. So I am happy. Oh. oh no, he's frozen. Peter is frozen. I thought he was just really happy. <laughs> oh, you're back. I'm back. All right. I heard keep trying. That's all I heard. It, it depends you on how much going. you want to keep trying. So like, like right. if you, so basically, like you could do all of this. It might take, like I'm gonna make some rolls, um, and it, and for something like the tower. Right, you don't know where the hell that would be. So, like, it it would probably five. Am I closer? Am I closer? Five would probably not get you all the way there. Yeah. Uh, in the case of the cargo, you already have a fairly good general idea. So I could um, start with like, my finger. In the so you map. could start your finger on a map and say, uh, "Is that you know, guide me to the the, the location that I want uh, with 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 like north, south, east, west, and then and it'll say north, and you'll move it. How about now?" East. Okay. And so you can get pretty dang close, even with just five. Okay. Um, so yeah, it depends how far you want to go. This Let's, island with the trash dragon could be anywhere in the world, right? So you might. Okay. Uh, so might so need I'll, I'll start in the middle of the sea because it's. I mean, it's going to be well, which, like yeah. it's an Which island. question are you going to start with? I'm going to start with um, the cargo. Okay. So you you've got a map in front of you. So let's. I mean, why don't we pull up that? Yep. Uh, the map of the. Um, there you go. The Northlands. So you've got your map in front of you that shows the edges of the, the, the Silver Mountains there. And you know that they came out of uh, the halfling town of Stumpwick, or at least or they were seen from flying over the, the halfling town of Stumpwick um, on their way east by southeast, and that they crashed somewhere in the foothills 
on the Ibetian side. So somewhere near the Great River there, the Silver right River. Here, just under the word silver. Uh, some, but somewhere up in the mountains. So you could start pretty easily by sticking your fingers somewhere up in those hills and say, which way, right? And let's assume you have a slightly more detailed map than this, yeah, so that you can get. If we were doing expedition shopping, I think one, of, hopefully one of us thought to get a map. You had the the library, like that's yeah. one of your backgrounds, so you absolutely did had the ability to get a decent map. Let's um, draw on a library book. So, well, they're your, it's your library. I know. Although so I'm let's actually, start I with the saving throw. To start the first public library um, and have the Quaggles run it, I, I, this is the thing <laughs> I want to do now. Um, <laughs> But we'll see. We'll see. Future plans. That's, that's very appropriate because you know that Henson, uh, 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 Henson Limited, whatever the hell they're calling themselves now, um, absolutely would, would be into that. This is an educational yeah. uh, resource, right? So, yeah. And we all know the Quaggles uh, worship the god Henson oh. or something like that. What? Okay. It's trash cannon. Yep. All right, make your saving throw. Intelligent saving throw. It's the first step here. Uh, do right. you get insanity or do you get answers? <laughs> Why not both? I mean, be both. It will probably eventually be both. The question is, how many answers do you get first? So DC is that fifteen. A one? It's saving a one. Throw. I'm gonna use inspiration. <laughs> Did you just roll a one? Yeah. On, a, on a quiet smuggling ship in the dead of night, where there's nowhere to hide, uh, it seems like a bad place to have a screaming yeah. fit. <laughs> Good. So I'm going to use an inspiration. Yep. <laughs> Five would bring me to a nine. Can yeah, I no, use my last there. inspiration? Not do it. Um, so normally the rules are that you don't get to double inspire a roll. All um, right. Then I, but I, what if I slap him real hard and give him oh. one of mine? <laughs> I know what I think I might do here. Uh... Actually, wait a second. No, you don't have a you don't have that ability. DM's gonna make up um, some stuff. Be good. You want to switch to the regular screen? I just want to remind myself what uh, what options there are. It's even on Copernicus, so that's good. Because yeah, I'm thinking. Does his shadow show up you again? Already spent, you already <laughs> spent the uh, inspiration. No, I had I had two, so now I have one. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. So my suggestion would be if you spend a hero point, we can waive some of these oh. uh, some of these saving throws. The other option is if you want to uh, to just potentially, you know straight up you failed the saving throw but you want to pay for it later we could black token this keep in mind that hero points come back less frequently yeah i'm more inclined to take a black token or just to take to take my lumps take, now to take yeah. the lumps it's up to you i think i'll take my lumps now we have two black tokens on the group already that's a lot of um yeah a lot well, of we kind of we kind of have one and a half because Randy's is earmarked for a specific event. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. My, mine involves a god, so it's a little actually kind of yeah. worse. So maybe that's like maybe. a di times two. <laughs> uh, so you're you're choosing to 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 take it now? Yeah, just go crazy. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Lose yourself uh, to the madness. I'm going to uh, make a roll. Because there is um, a lot of really good charts out there for effects of D and D uh, madness um, states. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When you have an effect on your conditions. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. It's been a very long week. Uh, I'm just looking at this list to see if it's like dumb or not. This is okay. I'm going to roll on this one. So I'm going to roll you a percentile effect. And we'll see what your condition involves. You shave your mustache like a trucker. 
<laughs> you are going to have vivid hallucinations. Okay. Oh, good. Um, and think I that you are. I was worried hallucinations wouldn't be vivid. And elsewhere. Like low, oh, no. low resolution hallucinations. These are some lackluster hallucinations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that um, the the major effects are, are set by the spell. While insane, you can't take actions. Uh, uh, so anything that requires an action, you can't do. Can't understand what others are saying to you. Can't read and can speak only in gibberish. So you're completely cool. unable to communicate. Um, uh, but I am adding the flavor to that, that uh, this is happening in part because you are hallucinating um, your hallucinations are going to involve um, being in uh, these black stone uh, dungeons, and you are uh, the floor is 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 basically just like pure uh, fine sand, and the walls and ceilings are impossibly enormous jet black stone blocks um and as you move through this <laughs> yeah and, and as you move through this space there are other creatures here uh moving around they're all ignoring you uh they are uh for the most part um dead things uh mummified corpses basically walking around going about their business i don't know if you've seen uh the the doctor who uh um what season was it uh, Peter Capaldi season where they did a, a whole series of stories with the with the, the weird undead monks, but they look like that. I think you can probably imagine uh, mummified undead monks pretty cool. easily if you haven't seen that. Um, and they're just sort of like softly hissing to themselves as they like wander around, uh, ignoring you as you move through this space. You you it's a very deja vu. You're moving through this space like you're reliving a specific set of memories or or like you're. Um, watching somebody else's Twitch stream as they play a first-person shooter. Cool. And you're moving through this pyramid as you and, and it and it flashes in and out. Like at certain points, you're you're like, no, it's not a weird stone pyramid. I'm in the hold of a ship, bumping into a cable tier of rope. Bonk. Oh. Oh, I'm assuming that wall. that it's gonna tie me down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so fitted very quickly. Uh, so uh, uh, Copernicus opens the giant book that he's always got with him um and it gets all very doctor strange as he starts chanting and like the pages are jet black in this section of the book and the letters glow eerie green and sort of lift off the page and the float like weird cg effects as he speaks these horrendous words that kind of like are painful to hear uh and like a circle appears around him and he starts to chant and a, a weird crack in reality kind of opens and a single big unblinking eye stares at copernicus and copernicus begins to ask it a question and his words just turn into a vomit of complete random syllables that don't mean anything and at first you assume that that's just part of this crazy shit that's happening um but normal. but then immediately the eye disappears and the crack is gone uh, and the, the magic kind of ends and Copernicus is just babbling randomly and like kind of flailing at the like the stack of sacks of grain next to him that are uh, or whatever the food stuffs for the crew is um, that he's like, like he's trying to scrape at it like it's like a, a closed door that he's trying to get his fingernails into and pull open and he babbles at you in random noises that don't mean anything. One of the mummies, uh, Copernicus, is a little tiny mummy, and it's looking at you, and it sighs with exasperation. Okay. Which cartoon am I also in? I feel like there well, must be... Rugrats. <laughs> oh, no! Horrible mummified Rugrats. Rugrats. <laughs> yeah. Those are some scary yeah, character designs to begin with. Which which character was it that made the just the, the random baby sounds all the time and no words? It's one of those. Dill? The tiny one? Dill? Yeah, yeah. I just don't like the one that's just, like, has no teeth, it's just gums. Yep. It's horrible, it's fleshy bad. smiles. That's yep. what, that's what, that's how fed it appears to you right now. Mm. And, and when he speaks at you, it just makes the babbly noises. Babbly baby noises. Like, cool. Tara Strong and Nancy Cartwright just making goo goo gaga noises at you. Well, tie me to the mast. Nope. I'm tiring something. 
I will tie so him you, to what Yeah, you were be. given you were given uh, instructions. Yeah. Uh, Veronicus could not give you instructions right now, but you yeah. uh, you were given them before that if this this sort of thing happened to like tie him up and Yeah. Uh, make me a roll. Because Copernicus is a little nutty here and not going to be particularly good at uh, not super high cooperating. Uh, what, what modifier am I? Uh, this will be. It's probably opposed, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be a grapple check, actually. <laughs> not very big, very stubby arms. He is an old man. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, roll me. They... Yeah, That's... roll me your your um. Uh, your grapple is going to be athletics here, so you've got a minus one. Um, but I think Copernicus's grapple is probably similar. Minus one, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, plus three, actually. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong sheet. Yeah, you got a plus three, so go ahead. Yeah. Uh, that would be a ten. Did not. How did you do, early. Copernicus? Where was this last roll? Oh no! Oh, did twenty? Is it a nat twenty? <laughs> a nat twenty. <laughs> Okay. okay, so you you immediately I'm so sorry, you escape. Dude. You escape. So I Fede throw goes, you into the sky. Fedid <laughs> grabs a rope and comes at you, and he's going to turn you, uh, tie you up. And in in your in your hallucination, one of these one of these mummies turns to you and like opens its mouth oh, no. and hisses and then lunges, and you go, Ugh. and you and you say you go, uh, not today, and push. Get me and, behind, Satan. <laughs> yeah, you push Fed it aside and bolt. Great. And Good. Um, so, yeah, the rest of you uh, are up on decks, uh, helping out to a certain extent, and uh, you hear, like, a thump and a crash of, like, Copernicus, like, getting to the other end of the hold and, like, careening into stuff and knocking it over. Um... I will look at Ugna and I'm like, we should go check on it because it's probably our fault somehow. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Even Ugna's like, I know what's going on. This mm -hmm. is bad. Mm -hmm. like, thing has gone wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> go downstairs. Um, I go downstairs. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna paint a picture for you because we're nearing the 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 game wrap here. So, the as you as you move towards the hatch, uh, to go down below decks. Um, you reach for it and it flies open with a crash and Copernicus comes like lunging out of it out, out at you um, his eyes are just completely white at this point and he just screams at you and in your head Copernicus you're just like you're, you're yelling uh, um, uh, you know defiant things at the mummies um, Fetid is like hanging off of like one leg and just being dragged along at this stage. Um, and and Copernicus it. says, like, he, he screams at you and then says just a bunch of syllables that don't mean anything. I also like, imagine that you have just, like, Christopher Lloyd hair now. Yeah. <laughs> Can I attempt to sap him? <laughs> oh, yes. That in fact, actually... in the interest of time, Ugna grabs him by both arms and pins mm -hmm. his arms... Uh, and you just uh, appear behind him and step up and wow. I would I would normally just hug him until he stops. Oh my god! I critically sap him. Oh my god! He's dead. nice. You're just Rip. out. <laughs> right, make a new character. All right, Pete, Grandpa. <laughs> head head just pops right off the shoulders. I believe I, even double double damage from the sap is still pretty pretty low. Um, I turn to the rest of the crew and she say, "Sorry, his diabetes is acting up." <laughs> you know how them old He's folks got get. The diabetes beatus. acts up. Mm -hmm. Got the diabetes crazies. Mm -hmm. uh, I like beat my grandfather with a strap. <laughs> yeah. Back to low deck. That's family. The beaten diabetes yep. family. <laughs> Oh. And you you quickly get him under below decks and uh, <laughs> and restrain him. Good. Um, this trip only takes a few hours, 
Nice. Uh, it's That's a good. it's a fast boat, and it's uh, uh, you're probably getting like a good twelve knots. Ooh. Um, so like right, by I dawn, Ernie's gonna need more than twelve knots to hold him down at this point. But a uh, And so we'll uh, we'll wrap the game <laughs> with uh, with you guys arriving uh, with the dawn uh, in the Karsh in the in not in Karsh Harbor, but rather in a, the Smuggler's Cove, uh, just north of the city of Karsh. Uh, where they're going to unload everything and uh, quite happily uh, have you make your way off this boat. Um, Please leave. Yeah, I will out. say, I will say <laughs> that uh, your grandpa beaters. While, while, while I'm unconscious, up and you should take money from me so that you can pay. <laughs> yeah, you probably you should. should. My body. <laughs> You probably should, and yeah, yeah, you do. You you pull out a, a, a you know several sacks of like Werther's originals before you find the uh, the money. But uh, uh, I will also say that like while Copernicus is like unconscious and tied up below decks, there's just like random haunting everything on the boat for the entire rest of the trip. Good. So they're they're very pleased to see the backs of you guys as you uh, disembark, pay up, and uh, GTFO. make your way into the city of Karsh, <laughs> which is where we will begin. Uh, next uh, adventure. I'll even like speed things up a little for the start of next adventure and say that uh, Tromlin, of course, now in his uh, guise as Townrick or Townick, uh, is going to. Was it Townick or Townick? Old man beater. Townick. Angry clown. Old man beater. Old man beater. Old man's bane. Red <laughs> fist. Grampy bane. <laughs> You shave off his porn stash while he's unconscious. Okay. No more of that, Grandpa. <laughs> Unforgivable. <laughs> um, and so yeah, you pull out your uh, your friends in low places and immediately uh, make contact with some of your thieves guild buddies um, to smuggle the rest of the group in through the the city. So you, of course, can go through the gates. You get yourself uh, done up in your in your traveling uh, entertainer clown guys and just wander on through the gates. You know, the guards make you do a dance because they're like, hey, you're that funny, funny guy. You make I have your, my, you, my familiar here. Yeah, you've got your hurdy-gurdy and you, uh, you get your, uh, your uh, familiar monkey to dance and they let you in and you're easily able to go and... Uh, and um, talk to your guild buddies there is in fact um a secret sally port uh that uh goes from one of the shanty uh huts that's built up against the outer great walls of the city that in fact has a secret entrance into the city the great city of karsh sprawling town with an enormous wall many times larger than mud hollow and that is where we will begin uh, as you go to make contact with uh uh, Vittori Sunshine, or Vittori Lusidia, the maestro. The mad maestro of Karsh. Excellent. And that's where we'll begin next time. Good. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I will uh, remind everybody, because I think I mentioned it last time, but uh, uh, unless anything changes at this point, uh, we'll have a guest uh, next game. I've already been talking character stuff uh, with Jim Zub. So he is going to uh, play a character that you guys are going to get to encounter in Karsh. And, uh, yeah, that next game is going to be back on Friday. So just make sure everybody knows. I'll post Friday, about it too. The so. 8th. Yep, March 8th is the next game for anybody who's on the stream who wants to mark a calendar. Or checking out the, uh, the VOD afterwards. Uh, any, any stuff to shout out? We want to go around the circle here and do the usual. Oh, actually, let's, no, we'll do the beginning of the next game. I was going to say, it's a new day here. You should roll for a new god, mm -hmm. but we'll do that next game. Yeah. We'll start off with it so we don't forget. Any shout outs? Nope. We're all tired. Yeah. 
Give oh. money to charity that is Yeah, involves, there's a lot going on like, right now. Combating all of the awful legislation and uh, anti-gay and anti-trans stuff that's mm-hmm. happening, mm-hmm. and also Ukraine. And if you and if you want to actually check out a charity and make sure it's worth giving to, try Charity Navigator. They do great breakdowns on how much charity actually gives. The ratings, like yeah. it says, it'll tell you yeah. this much goes to staff, this much is this, and this much goes to the actual product or what they're trying to do. Yeah, it's a great site. I highly recommend Charity Navigator. Is John's charity thing over already, or is it still going? No, it's still, still going. Oh, cool. It's still yeah, going. It's they, Shout they just, out. So they just passed 11,000. John Kovalik. Someone, If anyone has a, yeah, if anyone has a, 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 can find a link, I wouldn't mind putting that up in the chat. I can um, find that. But yeah, John Kovalik is auctioning off his uh, uh, original artwork uh, of um, that he drew of the Paddington bear fa- of, of Ukraine facing down the Russian bear. Um, and you can buy the prints as well. And he's giving all the money to a, um, uh, I forget the name of the charity, but they, they're arranging, they basically arrange food for the, uh, for the refugees that are getting out. Uh, world, something like kitchen. World Chef or World Kitchen or yeah. something like that. It's actually world a very Central good. Kid. Yes. Yeah. World Central Kitchen. Um, so that's a great shout out. Um, I will shout out these amazing there mustaches i will put this in the chat as well i'd like to shout out some some incredible oh, yeah. incredible oh, facial dirty, hair dirty, dirty pete's new only fans where he eats greasy <laughs> pizza in bed and for ten dollars you can ask for a topping i quite like i quite like Whoa. how alina's matches the hair um wow that's a really cheap uh, uh sex transaction there if only ten dollars a topping um yeah. <laughs> bottom is more expensive though uh and uh yeah a shout out as always to my uh shadow dm dan dan thank you thank for you, your dan. service thank you for and... watching my friend die's friend theo <laughs> if you're still here i don't know i hope so and shall we do the uh yeah yeah i've got the, the thing open are we still on a d20 here yep all right, so if you don't know about this, I'm rolling for... What's the high number that I need to... Are we at 20, or do I need uh, to... We're at 19, re-roll? so roll over if it hits 20. Okay, I rolled a 16, so we're good. 16. For those who don't know, this is uh, for all subscribers to the channel. Uh, you have a chance every game of winning the raffle for an art card drawn by some combination of our wonderful cartoonists. That is Indy Cthulhu. Indy Cthulhu, you are our big winner. Yay! So congratulations to Indy Cthulhu. Thank you. We will be in touch. Thanks, everybody. To get you your sketch, and that's it. Thank Unless you. There's all. anything I'm forgetting to say. Seems good. Fun game. See y'all. Thank you. See you next time on Trash Heroes.